The funding for this video is provided by the amazing members of our Patreon. Also contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Yeah, I started from PBS Kids. What you gonna do? Fight me? Anyway, wrong video. Okay. All right. Okay, so this was something that I briefly mentioned in my video where I was talking about how animation has respectability politics for black girls if they are the main characters. And I want to elaborate a little bit more about a small point that I made regarding colorism and the series My Life as a Teenage Robot. Yes, there were issues with colorism there. It might not be extremely in your face, but let me explain. <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Hariana and I'm back with another video. Hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Hariana. Welcome to or welcome back to The Pirate Ship, also known as Harry Hood's Pirate Ship. I am the captain, you are not my first mate. I don't got no first mate because you wanna know why? Bring your ear closer to the speaker so you can hear me clearly. Nobody's worthy of being the first mate. But hi, hello, how are you doing? My name is Hariana and I like to make content based on nostalgia and family and children's entertainment and all the issues that I find within those spaces. Now, on today's episode of Nick November, we are going to be talking more about the subject of my life as a teenage robot. Now this is more so about the subject of representation and why we need to be a bit more careful with what we do with these dark skinned characters that are in predominantly white spaces or spaces where everybody is much lighter than them. Yeah let's go ahead and get into it. But before we get there I just want to say that my Black Friday sale is still currently going on at the moment on my my website harryanahook.com everything is 35 percent off i have added a ton of new bonnets um i have added this jacket that i am wearing right now it is a panty and stocking with girder belt inspired jacket it's super cute super duper cute i also added another hoodie over there it's like a miraculous ladybug inspired one um, I also added some stickers. I added a few prints, but yeah, I've added tons of fun things. The sale ends on Monday night and yeah, thank you. We deeply appreciate it. But watching the videos with the ads on is good enough for me. So yeah, now let's continue on with today's subject matter. So for those of you guys who don't know, because I noticed that I do often have to refresh people's memories about a lot of these shows that we watch in the past, My Life as a Teenage Robot is a show about that, a teenage robot, a girl named Jenny, she's a robot, and her sole focus that her mother has put on her is to fight crime and save the fucking day. She's basically like a Powerpuff Girl, but like a robot, if that makes sense, like Dynamo, I'd say. But because that is like her main purpose, she's just like, no, I actually want to be like a normal girl. I want to go to school. I want to actually go to parties. I want to like, you know, have different fashion and shit like that. Like so much of like this show is just Penny, not Penny, Jenny being a normal freaking person. And then the other part of it is her actually having to do her fucking job. It's actually very complex the more I think about it because we do get on the subject of like child labor and, you know, parents forcing their goals and dreams onto their children making them want to do shit they don't want to do it's a whole interesting concept but at the school that Jenny attends we get like so many different kinds of people it's low-key your typical high school setting that you often would see in our movies and whatever it's low-key giving not another teen movie but two of the most popular girls in school who also are the bullies of the story would have to be Brit, T Brit Crest and Tiff Crest. Now Brit and Tiff are cousins while Brit is the tall dark skinned one. Now before we go any further somebody had this made me remember that a lot of people are not that bright. Somebody has said how are Brit and Tiff cousins but they don't look alike. I'm gonna no 
Y'all, ooh, ooh, y'all know this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, y'all ever just see something and it just make you go like, you really don't know what that word means, do you? I'm telling you, we are in an age of anti-intellectualism and like every little thing that I feel like should be basic knowledge is low-key getting on my nerves. But instead of talking more so about Tiff Christ, because we can be reading her character to be a bit like anti-black or anti-POC with what the story wants to do with her, I solely want to focus more on her cousin, Brit Christ, who was dark skin. Brit was pretty much one of the darkest characters that we saw in the show. And while there is nothing wrong with Brit being dark skin, the problem is that while she is one of the darkest characters in the show, she is the darkest character that we see more often in this series. She is just portrayed to be this horrible, despicable human being. Now, why do we need to be more careful when it comes to what we do with dark skin characters and how they are portrayed in our media? Well, you know the thing that we have in our role called color biases? People tend to associate colors that are darker to be more evil air quote i'd say and that is part of the reason why when we go back and watch a lot of these movies especially when it comes to black cinema i feel like this is a lot more present there than we would see in white cinema and whatnot i mean it's very present in white cinema too but it's a little bit easier to explain with black cinema and black cinema will have the one heroine who is a light skin or a woman of lighter skin is like you know seen to be as beautiful and desirable by the story but then we'll see another character who is of darker skin. She most likely would, you know, have more stronger features than that said lighter skin character. And they are portrayed to be nasty, rude, mean, whatever. You guys get the gist of it. You guys understand that. In aspects like this, when it comes to dark skin characters in our media, our media often finds ways to villainize them. And it's frustrating because they chose to villainize the character who was the darkest person a part of the cast now why is that frustrating you say listen let me tell you something one thing i have learned is that a lot of white people seem to understand the concept of racism and representation but they don't seem to understand the concept of colorism and representation i hope y'all know that colorism is racism's nasty child it is all of these things are subsections of each other while it is not made specifically clear what Brit and Tiff are, and before anybody try to sit here and say that they are Asian, they're not. It's never been specified what they are. That's why a lot of people sit here and say that Brit and Tiff are Asian. That's why a lot of people sit here and say Brit and Tiff are Black. That's why a lot of people say Brit and Tiff are Latina. Brit and Tiff are very much ambiguous characters. So if anybody says any of those things, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're incorrect because guess what? The story never specified it. So yeah, I've always read those characters to be Black. I always just saw Tiff to be light skinned. And while Brit and Tiff were both as nasty as each other, because they were both horrible fucking people, while their outfits ate down, they were awful. It just really reminded me of how when it comes to white people making media that they want to include characters of color within, and y'all say POC characters, I'm like, y'all do realize you said people of color characters, right? But anyway, when white people create these media, because that's the one thing a lot of people don't seem to understand when we talk about the subject of representation and animation period is that people say that we're looking too hard into it it's not that deep they probably didn't mean it like that well yeah they probably didn't mean it like that also a lot of white people do things that are accidentally racist or offensive and don't even realize it because they have gone so long in their life without being told hey this said thing is a problem maybe you shouldn't do that and Nickelodeon at the time period, specifically Nicktoons, the cartoons that ran on that network, it, they were mostly made by white people with the sprinkle of tokenism here and there within their series. Well, I am really big on not all representation is good representation. And I have come to the conclusion with that with so many of the shows that I have grown up watching. If you sit there and you look at the main cast of My Life as a Teenage Robot, pretty much all of those characters were white. The supporting characters were the ones that that were of color and sadly the supporting characters that were the most important that being Brit and Tiff were girls of color. Western animation has a pretty bad habit of either not necessarily doing much of anything with their characters of color within their shows that are taking up space with mostly white people. They either don't know what to fucking do with them or they just villainize them to the T and it's just like 
it's bad enough that when we look at the Nicktoons from the 2000s, there isn't that much representation for darker skinned characters, period. But then so much of that representation there isn't good. And when I say it isn't good, I specifically mean how they take these characters and they put them in these predominantly white spaces and then just literally just throw anything at the wall and see what freaking sticks. I wouldn't even necessarily say that Brit was a well-written character because one, she wasn't that much different than Tiff, her cousin. And honestly, their characters were like two and two. They were always seen together. They pretty much acted exactly the same except one spoke different than the other, one looked different than the other. That was the same character, they just made it twice. I'd say Brit and Tiff were very surface level at most. The only thing to their characters is that they were mean and that's it. One thing I have noticed when it comes to the subject of Nicktoons and in the 2000s is that they had no problem with wanting to put tokenism within their series, but they weren't doing much of anything when it came to having these people be behind the scenes in the writer's room, having the people work behind the scenes of these productions. There was no sensitivity going on. There weren't trying to be careful or anything like that. It was just a predominantly white people just making shows about what they know. Now when it comes to Brit, she is a character that we say is like very super duper into fashion and we don't necessarily have much of that when it came to girls of color and in the 2000s, those specifically of darker skin. Well that is great right there, like I said, Brit's very much surface level. I had mentioned this before but I had said something about how if you take a lot of these black girls and these darker skinned girls of color from these cartoons in the 2000s, you can almost always fit them into two categories. But at the end of the day, most of them fall into one category and that is them being poorly written and it being very clear that their story is not knowing what to do with them outside of making them the villain. When I say we need to be more careful about what we do with darker skinned characters, I specifically mean as, wow, yeah, we do need these characters in our media. Don't simply put a character of darker skin in your story and mind you that they'd be the worst fucking character there. And when I say worst fucking character, it can go both ways. One, them being extremely villainized and being a horrible fucking person to the plot. And mind you, I think we are allowed to have very flawed characters of color within our media. But that makes everyone look kind of weird in a way because you sit there and you're like, okay, this shit was created by white people. And y'all not realizing that so much of the conflict that you put in with these characters can be read to be microaggressive. And that is exactly what has happened with Tiff's character. Well, Brit and Tiff's character, Tiff too, but Tiff isn't a character I say that suffers from colorism. That is just anti people of color right there. Brit is anti POC and colorism. And two, other than them being villainized in the story, they're just not well written. Like they don't have much of anything to them. They have no fucking type of personality. They're just kind of there surface level, only have one or two personality traits and it's nothing more from there on. I have been revisiting my life as a teenage robot often because I have been wanting to do a lot more cosplays from this series because the outfits ate down, I'm not even joking. They was eating. The girls were fucking eating. I loved it. I can't help but get uncomfortable when I'm watching this series and I have just noticed that this series wanted to have diversity. They were trying to do their best with being inclusive but not realizing that them wanting to be inclusive they ended up just being offensive at the same time. Animation as a general still has a lot of work to do when it comes to the subject of representation but when we look at the cartoons from the 2000s it just kind of makes me go huh like i kind of scratch my head a little bit because i can see what they were trying to do but it just goes to show you that just because you have characters of color on your screen that's not necessarily enough there needs to be people of color working behind the scenes of these productions too and i'm not sitting here and saying that we need to have one or two of these people behind a production no if you're going to make something that has poc within it i think it should be kind of like a 50 50 situation because i'm not even joking and when Miraculous Ladybug, sorry to bring that stink ass show up, but when Miraculous Ladybug had announced that they were doing an Africa special, we saw that there was only like two black people. The majority of that room was white. I was like, I'm sorry, but if you're going to make a special that takes place in Africa, I feel like you need to have black people, specifically those who are of African descent, because I'm pretty sure they were having it from Dakar. Why didn't y'all actually go and ask those people for help with that production? 
that's the thing that gets on my nerves and that's what so many people that work in the entertainment industry not just specifically animation but the entertainment industry period is that if they want to tell stories about people of color there needs to be more of them included behind the scenes of that said story Listen, I like my life as a teenage robot as the next person, but I was getting kind of frustrated with this accidental colorism that was put in the series. Do I do I sit here and think that these people did colorism on purpose? No, I'm not sitting here saying that it was on purpose and that it was intentional. But also at the same time, Nickelodeon has a long history of disrespecting girls of color. Not just black girls, all of them. Because what y'all did to Maria up in Hey Arnold, y'all gonna pay but seeing how this network has a long history of just villainizing the one few character of color black girl girl of darker skin within their series just gets kind of frustrating because i said something about how i get irritated when i was watching all of those dance snyder shows and i was noticing the same fucking shit going on in all of them and one of those things being how they treat the black girls especially the ones of a darker skin i was getting annoyed with that shit but it kind of got more frustrating because I even started to notice that this was a big problem within their Nicktoons just as well. It's an overall issue. Just how Disney has an overall issue with colorism, Nickelodeon has a fat ass problem with that too. And that's pretty much all I have to say about this um, rant. Sorry, it was just something that just really crossed my mind and I just couldn't stop thinking about it when I had brought up how what this show did with Brit can be read to be as colorist, but I felt like a lot of people didn't seem to understand why I said that so I wanted to go in a little bit more detail about what that was. Colorism is much more than just not having like darker skin characters within your series because when we talk about the colorism situation in Euphoria we often just bring up how there's barely any dark skin characters in the show. That specifically being season one is specifically with the girls but season two of Euphoria we can still read that series to be colorist because people were trying to say that Euphoria season two wasn't colorist because of the inclusion of Veronica Taylor's character being Bobby and I was like no it's still colors because Bobby literally was a freaking mammy to one of the white girls in the show on top of the fact that she was the darkest character she did not say no more than like 20 words the whole season you guys get it it goes much deeper than just not having that inclusion there it also matters with what you are doing with that inclusion just as well like it just kind of gets on my nerves when people be like here nigga damn like that's exactly how y'all be sounding when y'all be like you should be glad that they included you up in the series and I'm like no there's still things that we could talk about right here because there are problems please listen <laughs> But yeah, I don't want to go on too long with this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Y'all are the best. Like I said, Black Friday is still going on. The link to that will be down below. Highly do appreciate it. But like I said, if you watched the video with the ads on, that was good enough too, just as well. Thank you all so much. Um, yeah, I don't know. My birthday is coming up and I'm just kind of like really emotional right now. And I'm just so grateful for y'all. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day, night, or whatever time of the day that you chose to watch this video. I'm just thankful that you watched it with the ads on. All right. Thank you. Goodbye.